Hello, Jenna's King here with my video update for April 2023. And we've got an amazing update this month. It's quite a special reading because it's all majors. Now, if you don't read tarot, you, you won't know what I mean when I say all majors. But trust me, the major cards in tarot, the big heavy hitters, you know, the lovers and death and the, the rock star cards. For the first time in all of the time I've been doing these updates, I've never had uh, a reading where we've had all majors, which tells us it's an important reading. So something that we need to take notice of. And I think this is a reading that is, in fact, direct from spirit. So it's something that is something that, that, that is on a deeper level than perhaps just the normal energy update that we would we would normally we would normally get so what cards did i draw the first card as the overarching energy is the fool and the fool is in tarot number 0 and he's zero because he is no thing he is complete potential okay he is um has all of the possibilities um, encapsulated within him and the idea of the four is that he makes a jump and he makes a jump with no knowledge of outcome so he is innocent of knowledge but he is foolish he knows nothing well it's not that he's foolish it's just that he's not um he's not embracing any knowledge in what he does he just jumps and figures it out as he goes along so that's the idea of the fall the fall is a leap of faith and it normally comes at the beginning of a phase or the beginning of a new period and it tells us in some way we have to make a fresh start so this can happen at any time it can be a start of a new job or it can be a move or it can be um, somebody wanting to restart a relationship and let the past go and start afresh innocent of all past occurrences so this month we're being asked to do that we're being asked in some way to let go of what we know let go of any preconceptions let go of any fear that's a big part of the fall energy let go of any fear and just do it okay even if you're afraid feel the fear do it anyway so it's it's quite an important card it's the first card of all of the major arcana cards and it's the place from which we we do everything okay or or we should do everything hopefully so that's the overarching energy so that's great now it's not a particularly stable energy Okay, the fool is not stable. The fool makes no guarantees. Yeah, because the part of the fool card is that when we jump, we don't know whether it's going to work out or not. Um, we just have to jump anyway. And that's the point. So we learn as we go. We figure it out as we go. Um, there is a, 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 what's it, a, a quote from Zig Ziglar that says, it's not how much you it's not how hard you fall that matters it's how high you bounce back so the idea is that that even if something doesn't work out you know you can always bounce back you know you're going to be okay so we can jump we can take that leap of faith and we just know that okay even if we have an ouch at the end of it we'll still be on a new track we'll still be on a new journey and then we can just pick ourselves up dust ourselves off and rawr, get on with it so okay so the fall is our overarching energy i like that that's awesome that is a great start to the month so what's next what should we embrace now this is the part of the reading this is this is where i started to go uh what because the fall at the beginning of the reading is is fine that's great you go oh yeah great we're at the beginning of a new phase the next card though made me raise an eyebrow if i could raise an eyebrow i can't but i would i'll do it manually because the energy that we should embrace is the devil now the devil comes up in tarot again as one of the big heavy hitter cards and we automatically see the devil and we automatically say bad card now one of the things i always crack on about when i'm talking to my students is there is no such thing as a bad 
card it's all just energy energy just is okay if we term something bad that's very subjective that's just our view of it it maybe it isn't bad maybe in fact that's just the way we're seeing it now the devil card talks though it's it's meaning isn't bad but it tells us that we're probably putting our attention on the wrong thing and that um you know whatever it is we've been so hypnotized by it's going to be a bit of a blind alley if happiness is our goal so it's it may it's like a short-term fix and and maybe there is a better way we can do this it's also inherently selfish it is a it is a card of solo gratification so whatever it is you have your own interests at heart so all of these things often don't lead us to an end result which is which is favorable and it can also mean that we dig ourselves a hole that we find it hard to get out of so that's why we term the devil a bad card but we're being asked to embrace it hmm interesting why would we be asked to embrace the devil? Well, let's look at that. If we're being asked to embrace the devil, we're being asked to put aside our view that we need to take care of other people in the equation. It's telling us to look at what our desires are. It's telling us to do a deep dive into our own personal desire. What do we want? In the words of the Spice Girls, tell me what you want, what you really, really want. What do you really, really want? And the devil, that's the question the devil asks. What do you really, really want? And it's telling you that perhaps you're so wound up in serving the needs of others that you're not actually looking at your own life and what it is you want because you know we can we can end up playing very small we can end up just just you know walking on a path which is actually quite limited because we feel we can't or we shouldn't or it's selfish or oh i need to do this because of this and we get all snarled up in the could have should have all of those things that we we end up living a, a version of life which is which is less joyful, less happiness, ha happy than than would be our potential. Okay, so that's interesting, isn't it? I think we need to we need to look at that. Now the devil is at its core a hard energy to control, because once we start stepping into the world of our desires, we can get you know we can get really um snarled up but it depends on what those desires are doesn't it so if your desire is is something that is is inherently going to cause somebody else some real pain i mean we're, we're not going to go into the deep dark well of human black desire we're not talking about that and i think the reading will make that clear as we go on but the fact is that some of the some of us we have the desire for things in life which which we're just not engaging with because we don't feel we have permission to or because we think somebody else is is needs are more important so let's let's have a look at that let's let's look at what our desires are not not the the sort of twisted you know, rather dark version but the but the the real version in life, the real thing. What do you really want? Okay, crack on. So what's the next card? What is going to challenge that? And it's perfectly coherent, the hermit. Now the hermit in tarot is where we are feeling a bit alone and we are needing to draw on our own wisdom. Now it's a very austere card it's not the most fun card in the deck it's it's a card where we're basically uh putting aside comfort and pleasure in in the sort of in the name of us doing the right thing and drawing on our own wisdom and also drawing on, on what we've learned to be wise because the hermit is all about being wise 
Now it's interesting, isn't it? Because what was the overarching energy? It was the fool. And the fool is not wise. The fool is coming innocent of knowledge. So the hermit, so what you've learnt is wisdom, is going to get in your way. It's getting in your way and it's blocking you from achieving the things in life that you really, really want. So um, because the hermit is austere and the hermit is, is asking us to, to forsake our own personal pleasure in order for us to to you know go into ourselves and and confront our inner stuff and and all of that now that's that's good in its place but in this reading it's not asking you to do that it is asking you to go into what would make you happy what would bring you joy what would make your life more enriched more exciting bigger right and so the hermit is not the right energy so we shouldn't be asking what's wise we should just be asking what do we want and if we had no rules if we had no um what's what, what am i trying to say here if we had no preconceptions about what we could and couldn't do and what was and wasn't possible what would that set you free to actually do? And perhaps this month is a good idea to look at that as a reality, right? Now, the devil, um, the devil and the lover's card are always put side by side, right? And the, the devil is like the anti-love card and the lover's is the, is the love choice. So when we're choosing the devil, normally in tarot, we're, we're choosing fake love, okay? So... Fake love is, as we can see on the devil card, it's like it's a solo version. It's not connected. We're not, we're not sort of, um, we're not equally loving somebody else and ourselves. And, you know, it's just all about us. But the thing is that what if we came to the conclusion that actually choosing the devil sometimes is quite important? because it's not just about always loving somebody else and putting your relationship first what if your relationship with yourself actually is where it starts because that's sort of the baseline isn't it what is your relationship with yourself and what you want now sure other people are important but primarily we have to decide what's right for us. And that has to be the ground on which we stand. So what is the message from spirit around all of this? And this is why I came to the conclusion that this whole reading was a message from spirit. Because the message from spirit is the Empress. Now after the two last cards the devil and the hermit both of which are, uh, are difficult cards both of them are difficult energy cards they're uncomfortable in their energy they challenge us in their energy the empress is completely the opposite she's absolutely beautiful now the empress is the universal mother figure okay she is mother she is mother earth she is the earth goddess and she represents our relationship to our own source of creativity. So we can see she's shown as a mother because she gives birth. Now, this is not actually an inherently female card. It, it applies to everybody, male or female. It's just it's receptive. So it's, it's all about what's inside. Now, the, the Empress is all about pleasure and love. And that font of, of creativity and fertility in life. It's not just creativity as in arts and music and drawing and painting and writing and all of that. It's, that's fine. This is bigger creativity. This is what comes from us. And so Spirit's message in this case is that we are a vessel of infinite creativity. That's what we are. And when we limit ourselves, yeah, we are 
doing that energy a disservice now when we go back to the devil card the devil card is limiting it's telling us that we are limiting ourselves in some way so if we want to if we ask the devil as guidance if we take the devil as a guidance card it's telling us look at where you're limiting yourself take a really good hard look at that because maybe you're <clears throat> sorry maybe you're limiting yourself because you don't see yourself as a creative force you don't see yourself as an infinite well of creative life energy. And also the lover's card talks about, sorry, not the lover's, the empress card talks about how we nurture ourselves, how we take care of ourselves. Right? And that's what this entire reading is about. It's about self-love. Because self-love comes first. You know, when you're on an aeroplane, I say this in my reading sometimes and in my coaching to clients, when you're on an aeroplane and there's a Houston, we've got a problem. What does the air hostess tell you to do? She tells you to put your oxygen mask on first, even before that of your child, because you can't help anyone else if you can't breathe. So, and that's the point here. Where can you not breathe? This is important where are you drowning where are you drowning in in the name of other people's service so this is all about coming back to yourself coming back to yourself as a creative life energy coming back to what's inside you what nurtures you what brings you joy what feels wonderful because that's what the empress is about and the empress is infinite energy she is earth she is nature she is boundless and that energy is boundless within us and if we go back again to the fall the fall is nothing and everything he has all potential within him at his disposal should he just jump so this is a really a really powerful reading and i i hope in some way that it resonates for you i found immediately a way that it resonated for me um, at this point and maybe it will help you as well and guide you through the month ahead and i hope you use it positively and in a really affirming way in your life so have a wonderful april spring is on the way it's the perfect reading for spring isn't it because it's everything coming back to life everything being born again which again comes back to the empress card so absolutely right for this time of year and i i hope you take it with my love and i hope it serves you well and if uh, I'm here for a reading, if you need one, if you are new to this and this is the first reading you've seen and you want to like and subscribe, that's what we all have to do, isn't it? Like and subscribe, guys. Um, I'm putting up a video every week from now on. So there'll be a new bit of content every week and I hope you'll enjoy that. In the meantime, I'm always here for a reading if you need me and I look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. Bye bye.